Well, I ordered this Creality Ender 3 S1 last week because there was a sale on Amazon and I was just going to get a regular Ender 3 but with this sale I thought, you know, I want the direct drive extruder and so I decided to go with the upgrade. I'm going to take this all out, I'm going to get this all out of the box and then I'm, I'm going to do a time lapse of the build. Um, so enjoy. Well, I've got everything laid out and I'm pretty surprised that this is all that was in the box. We've got the main base here, which already has the Y axis attached to it, all the motors attached. We've got some connection ports for connecting the rest of the printer. We've of course got the power cord. We've got the touch screen display. We've got the direct drive extru extruder. This is my first direct drive printer. So usually when you get a Bowden extruder, there's a lot more pieces. So maybe that's why I'm surprised that there really isn't that much here. Uh, we've got some supports and then this is for holding the filament. And this is a monitor that monitors the filament to the extruder. We've got the Z axis and X axis here, which is the main, I think, portion of the printer besides for the base. This just attaches right on there. Also came with a bag full of goodies of screws and wires and some manuals and some tools. But that's really it. I'm really surprised that that's all was in the box because when I put together my Ender 5 Plus, it was a lot more complex. There were a lot more parts. So this should overall be a really simple build and I'm excited to get started. We will begin by taking the four long hex screws provided and attaching the Z gantry to the base. Next, we will put the direct drive extruder on using the four small screws. Now we're going to take this clip that was provided and we're going to put it on the back of the printer. This is going to be used to route some of the cables along so it doesn't get caught in different parts of the printer. Take two medium hex size screws and connect the touchscreen support to the base of the printer. Now we're going to take the cords available in the base and put them into each of the Z stepper motors. So once those are connected, there's also going to be a cord to connect the base plate, which you can see I'm doing now. And then finally, we will take the power supply and plug that into the base. Take the main electrical cable and plug it into the direct drive extruder. The connection's a little wonky, so just work with it until it pops in. Then we're going to take the two little connectors off of the main electrical cable and plug those into the X stepper motor. Remember that there are two connections, so make sure to plug both of them in. And then we're going to take the main electrical cable and tuck that into the support I mentioned earlier. Take the touchscreen display off and plug in the electrical cable. And then after that's plugged in, easily install that back onto the support. Now install the filament bracket on top and take the electrical cable and connect that to the filament sensor. Okay, well this is all set up and one thing I forgot to mention is that I got this cheap on Amazon because it was a refurbished printer. And unfortunately it did not come with this uh, filament holder. This, there's like usually a spool right here that holds the filament. And so I contacted the company. Hopefully I'll get either a replacement or some credit or something. It also came with a lot of extra tools and cables that aren't used for this printer. I think it's probably just a packaging error because it is refurbished. There are also a few dings and scratches on the printer. I don't really care as long as it functions. So once I get this piece, because I obviously can't print anything right now, once I get this piece to put filament in, I will do some test prints and show you guys what that looks like. I ended up 3D printing the filament holder piece that I was missing. I did contact the company and they said that they would send me a new one, but for now this will do. Now once I attach this, we can put some filament on and set up the rest of the printer. Now we are ready to power up the printer. And it'll just take a second, but once it's powered up, we're going to go to prepare and then we're going to scroll down to auto home. Okay, the printer is now auto homing and this is time lapsed a little bit so it doesn't take up too much of the video. Once the printer is auto homed, you can go to move and scroll down to Z axis. It should be set at 10 millimeters. You're gonna wanna click on that and move that all the way to zero. Once that's to zero, go back and go to Z home. And this is where you put the piece of paper under your nozzle and you move that until your paper catches just a little bit. 
Now we're going to go to level and this will take 16 points to auto level your printer bed. It's a good idea to check your nozzle clearance after this has been done. We will take the filament and put it through the filament sensor. This will be routed down to the direct drive. You're going to pull this little tab and it's going to grip in there by a gear, push until you feel a little bit resistance and you should be good to go. Now we're going to plug in our SD card and we can finally start to print. This is just a time lapse of a cat from the SD card that was provided with the printer. A lot of times manufacturers will provide test prints so that you can actually test all the metrics of your printer before you start printing things that are important to you or print things that you actually want to print. So it's always good to use one of these test prints just to test everything before you start printing for real. There was only a little bit of filament left on that spool so it didn't print the cat all the way. However, um, I think the detail came out pretty well and overall I'm really happy with it. Well, that about wraps things up. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time.